Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about mitral regurgitation. Mitral regurgitation is one of the most common cardiac abnormalities which we are going to get in our medicine department and uh, for MBBS students. It can be due to rheumatic heart disease, it can be due to mitral valve prolapse or it can be due to infective endocarditis. Comparing to mitral stenosis, infective endocarditis problems are very common in mitral regurgitation uh, and uh, uh, it is very less in mitral stenosis. Whenever there is a problem with the valve, it can produce mitral regurgitation. It can also be produced by the problems in caudate tendine or papillary muscle. So both papillary muscle dysfunction, caudate tendine rupture, and valve dysfunction, all these things can produce mitral valve disease and mitral regurgitation. So here we can see uh, this uh, picture uh, says how the mitral regurgitation occurs. Here it is due to mitral valve prolapse and regurgitation, but commonly the uh, problem will be mostly rheumatic heart disease. Here you can see what happens to the uh, uh, cycle we can see during the cardiac cycle during systole left ventricle pumps blood to the aorta during that period if there is a problem in the mitral valve that is mitral regurgitation partly the blood will go to the aorta partly it will go to the left atrium which is unusual for a normal heart since there is a problem here in the mitral valve whether it is mitral regurgitation due to rheumatic heart disease, infective endocarditis or mitral valve prolapse. Here what is seen in this figure is mitral valve is prolapsed inside to the uh, left atrium and there it opens so that uh, the blood may go from left ventricle to the left atrium. And chronically the uh, fluid overload can enlarge the left atrium. So here Chronically, the left atrium and left ventricle can also be enlarged because of the volume overload. Now, we, we can see the causes for mitral regurgitation. Rheumatic heart disease, the commonest mitral valvular disease, uh, congenital uh, mitral valvular disease, uh, infective endocarditis, papillary muscle dysfunction, cardiomyopathy, LV dilatation, connective tissue disorders like ankylosing spondylitis, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, Marfan syndrome, Erland danlos syndrome, amyloidosis, sarcoidosis. So these, these are the common causes for mitral regurgitation. When we compare with mitral stenosis, mitral stenosis is mostly due to rheumatic heart disease, but here it can be due to rheumatic heart disease, infective endocarditis, papillary muscle dysfunction and mitral valve prolapse. These are the common causes uh, which can produce mitral regurgitation. Now, acute mitral regurgitation can be due to infective endocarditis, acute rheumatic fever, left atrial myxoma, connective tissue disorders. But in an elderly individual or an adult, the most common cause for acute mitral regurgitation is myocardial infarction which leading to papillary muscle dysfunction or papillary muscle rupture. The most common symptoms of mitral regurgitation is dyspnea, fatigue, Palpitation. Dyspnea is due to pulmonary edema. That is because during systole, the blood may go to the left atrium through the mitral regurgitation. Chronically, the uh, volume, volume status in the left atrium will increase. That will produce volume overload in the pulmonary circulation. That will lead to pulmonary edema and patient develops breathlessness, uh, all, uh, breathlessness, PND and all. Palpitation is due to mostly tachycardia, especially atrial fibrillation. On examination, you can get wide pulse pressure. This is called as small water hammer or pseudo collapsing pulse. So it may resemble uh, pulse like aortic regurgitation, but it will not be exactly like aortic regurgitation. There will be slightly increase in the uh, volume of the uh, pulse that is due to the volume overload in the left ventricle due to, the, due to chronic MR. Hyperdynamic apex, so that means uh, uh, on palpation of the apical limbus, you can see the 
uh, fingers are just lifted up but not sustained. So hyperdynamic apex, apex may shifted downwards and outwards that is due to left ventricular hypertrophy and later it produces left ventricular dilatation. Systolic thrill over mitral area that indicates grade 4 to 5 murmur of uh, mitral regurgitation. On auscultation you can see normally uh, in mitral regurgitation due to rheumatic heart disease the S1 will be soft that is because both the valve cusp does not approximate together they don't come closer uh, they are uh, either destructed and the closing of the mitral valve does not occur properly and before the closing itself blood may eject through the uh, mitral valve to left atrium from the left ventricle. So S1 is soft, there is a pan systolic murmur uh, that you can see after S1 there is a murmur uh, and S2 can be heard. So soft S1, high pitched blowing pan systolic murmur up at the apex, well heard with the diaphragm of the stethoscope and breath held in expiration. Murmur can radiate to axilla and back if anterior mitral leaflet is involved, murmur radiate to base if posterior mitral leaflet leaflet is involved. So normally the murmur is uh, localized to the apical area, mitral regurgitation murmur, pan systolic murmur well heard in the apical area, uh, apex of the heart. Then if it is radiating to the back, then anterior mitral leaflet is involved more. If it is radiating to the base, then posterior mitral leaflet is involved. Now when you talk about the grading of murmur, you have to always uh, 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 you, you should understand the uh, different grades of murmur. Grade 1, faint sound that can be detected, often detected by a cardiologist, that, is, that means an expert physician or cardiologist. Grade 2, soft murmur that is uh, readily detectable. Grade 3, louder than grade 2 but not associated with a palpable thrill. In grade 4 is very important, there you are getting a palpable thrill. A palpable thrill always tell you that that is a significant uh, disorder of the valve. But uh, there are some conditions like anemia, thyrotoxicosis or some other flow murmurs also. You can get same types of murmur, but they are all you do not get a thrill. A thrill indicates there is a definitive heart disease or definitive valvular disease. So grade 4 is very important very easily heard murmur with thrill. Grade 5, very loud murmur with stethoscope placed lightly on the chest. Grade 6, extremely loud murmur even without a stethoscope you can hear it. Whatever it is, systolic murmurs are graded according to this grading because the loudness of murmur uh, tells you the severity of the lesion in systolic murmur. Whereas in diastolic murmur, this grading may not be significant because there the length of the murmur tells you the severity of the lesion. So systolic murmurs are always graded according to this grading system. Diastolic murmur, you can tell the grading, but that, that does not correlate with the severity of the lesion. MVP with MR or rheumatic heart disease with MR, what is the difference we should know? MVP with MR, there is no problem for the valve. It is only the valve, the valve apparatus is uh, prolapsed into the left atrium. Then it is unable to uh, maintain that closed uh, nature and it opens there. That's why S1 is normal in uh, MVP. Then there is a mid systolic murmur, then S2. Whereas in uh, rheumatic heart disease, valve itself is damaged, valve is unable to close properly. So you do not get a proper S1, then you get a pan systolic murmur. So that is the main difference between MVP MR and RHDMR. The same thing happens in papillary muscle dysfunction also. Uh, S1 may be normal in that condition, but whereas patients who is having papillary muscle dysfunction with very large ventricle, ventricular dilatation, again S1 can be soft. Mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation, VST all can produce pan systolic murmur. But you can see mitral regurgitation well heard in the uh, uh, apical area, apex of the heart. Uh, 
whereas tricuspid regurgitation well heard in the left lower parasternal area and mitral regurgitation murmur increases with inspiration uh, sorry increases with expiration whereas tricuspid regurgitation increases with inspiration all right sided events can increase with inspiration this is called as de carvalho sign vst murmur also can be heard better in the left parasternal area so these are the differential diagnosis for a pan systolic murmur uh, on the precordial area on auscultation sometimes you can get a mid diastolic flow murmur also when you are getting a flow murmur that mid diastolic murmur you have to remember two important thing one it can be due to severity of mr you can get a flow murmur in the diastolic phase so more blood is reaching the left atrium that much blood has to come back to the left ventricle so that is a abnormal flow that produces a abnormal uh, mid diastolic murmur that is flow murmur but whereas a patient who is having mr with ms some patients can have mr with ms then also you can get a mid diastolic murmur if the first start sound is loud then you have to think about a significant mr ms associated with mr so there are two important differential diagnosis for a flow murmur or a mid diastolic murmur uh, along with mitral regurgitation that can be due to ms or that can be due to flow murmur flow murmur indicates the severity of the mr and mid diastolic murmur due to ms may be associated with uh, loud s1 so we have to be very careful lv s3 can be there in left ventricular failure you know that because of the left ventricular dilatation volume overload slowly the left ventricle fails that produces lv s3 now there are some signs of severity systolic thrill in the apex shifted down uh, and out apical impulse that is left ventricular hypertrophy and dilatation presence of s3 that produces uh, due to left ventricular failure flow mid diastolic murmur upper parasternal heave that is due to left atrial enlargement that itself can produce atrial fibrillation also so the chambers involved in uh, mitral regurgitation is left atrium and left ventricle whereas in mitral stenosis only left atrium will be enlarged left ventricle will not be enlarged papillary muscle muscle dysfunction in clinical practice normally we get in uh, uh, patients who is having acute myocardial infarction any patient with uh, uh, acute myocardial infarction if they develop an acute uh, pan systolic murmur in the mitral area we have to always think about papillary muscle dysfunction mitral valve prolapse occurs in very tall thin individuals with morphonoid features so they can have palpitation sweating anxiety fear and uh, on auscultation you can get a uh, cardiac click uh, systolic click and sometimes you get a murmur also sometimes this patient can uh, uh, like uh, they can deteriorate and they develop mitral regurgitation so that is mvp with mitral regurgitation the, the main differentiating feature between uh, mvp with mr to rheumatic heart disease with mr is the presence of normal s1 here the valve closes then it ascends up to the left atrium and then it opens so the closing occurs normally so you get a normal first start sound now when you talk about investigation most of the patients come to emergency room with acute breathlessness uh, we have to take a chest x ray you can see here left ventricle is enlarged bilateral pulmonary edema in the chest x ray is bilateral diffused non homogeneous opacities so we have to treat this patient with lasix and uh, frusamide that is frusamide uh, 80 to 120 mg iv can be given niv support should be given oxygen niv support propped up position all these things can be given echo may shows uh, regurgitation uh, in the uh, echo findings ecg may shows uh, uh, may show lv uh, enlargement and la enlargement la enlargement is wide notched p waves lvh will be prominent r waves in uh, v6 v5 and prominent q waves in v1 v2 so lvh with lah is the classical finding in uh, mitral regurgitation if the patient develops mitral regurgitation and who is symptomatic and if the ejection fraction is reducing we have to replace the 
valve. Mitral valve replacement is the treatment for MR. Whereas in MS, you can uh, dilate the valve, you can uh, correct the valve orifice uh, with dilatation. Whereas in MR, we have to replace the valve. Once we replace the valve, we have to uh, take care uh, the uh, coagulation problem because uh, most of the metallic valve which is replaced can have uh, 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 embolic phenomenon. So we have to start heparin and uh, warfarin prophylaxis for these patients. All these patients, whether the, there is MR or MVP with MR or replaced mitral valve, they all require infective endocarditis prophylaxis treatment. So we have discussed about one of the most common cardiac problem that is cardiac valvular disease that is mitral regurgitation. Mitral regurgitation is very common in our country because of rheumatic heart disease. Both MS and MR can be due to uh, rheumatic heart disease. Both these conditions produce left atrial enlargement and that may produce chronic embolic phenomenon and it can also produce atrial fibrillation. And MR actually produces both LA and LV enlargement. LV failure can occur in many patients. Most of these patients can have cardiac failure with pulmonary edema. So these patients can come with acute breathlessness to emergency room. We can treat this patient with LASIX and NIV support. Mitral valve uh, replacement is the treatment of choice in mitral regurgitation. Uh, and infective endocarditis prophylaxis should be given all patients who is having mitral regurgitation, MVP with MR. MVP alone, they does not require infective endocarditis prophylaxis, but a patient who is having MVP with MR, mitral regurgitation due to other causes, post mitral uh, valve uh, replacement therapy, all these patients require infective endocarditis prophylaxis or uh, oral anticoagulations like warfarin should be continued. Thank you.